right now, Meredith and I were playing that game. You know, it used to be if you were stuck on a desert island, you know, name the three people you'd like to be stuck with or, or you know, who would you invite to a dinner party? Now it's, you know, if you were sheltering in place and stayed at home <laughs> and quarantined, uh, who would be on the list? Ann Coulter, you were on both of our lists. We would love to be stuck with you right now. That's because, you know, instead of being a fanatical worker and exerciser, I'm just drinking wine and watching movies. <laughs> That's right. And, and yelling at people on Twitter, which is pretty fantastic. We fell in here at the earth. <laughs> you know, uh, listen, you and I both spent time in New York. We both love that city. Uh, and I kind of hate it, too. But it's a love-hate relationship with yeah. New York. But it has been uh, sort of ground central for this, or whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, for the, the, this whole drama playing out. And, and, and again, I feel terrible for the people in that city who have gotten sick and who have died, of course. That goes without saying. But everything they said was going to happen in New York. Andrew Cuomo, it was only 10 days ago when he was screaming about who was going to die because he wasn't getting 30,000 yep. ventilators. And now look where they are. I mean, is it is it too soon to say, hey, guys, we were pretty wrong here? And... President Trump was right. Yep. Yes, um, he, he was killed. That, he would go out there and say, I don't think they need yep. 30,000 ventilators, and they destroyed him for it. Yes, they would denounce him for disagreeing with their predictions that have now turned out to be wrong. Um, I always think it's a bit bad idea to make fun of someone for a prediction. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen yet. Let, well, why don't you wait and see? Um, as when I predicted Donald Trump would be the nominee. Right. Um, wait, wait, wait until it happens before you really guffaw about it. <laughs> um, and wow, we've been seeing that just on a daily basis. I mean, the ventilator, Cuomo saying, who will choose who's going to die? Right. Um, and and demanding thirty thousand ventilators. It turns out they what they didn't even need five thousand. I think the number. Yeah, I, think, is. I think the peak was a little over five. Um, moreover, um, I'm guessing. I keep meaning to look this up. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't report the facts to you right now. Um, but I'm guessing Mayor De Blasio kept his yap shut about the ventilators. Now that we come to find out that Mayor Bloomberg had prepared for a pandemic, yep. had New York City's own, relatively small, it's a city, it's not a country, but a stockpile of ventilators, and as soon as Mayor de Blasio was elected, he auctioned them off. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And you know what's great about that, Anne? I saw some de Blasio apologist making the case, well, it turned out that it cost so much money to keep them in good repair and maintenance that de Blasio decided not to spend that money. Since when has Bill de Blasio decided not to spend money on anything? He's well, spending... also, I, excellent point. How much money did he give his wife um, to to rip off that phony nonprofit? Um, I, I, I always, always have to look it up. Again, something I should know on the top of my head before bringing it up on live radio, I guess. But what I remember about it is I always have to look it up because it's such an astronomical amount, like $80 million. And, and you think to yourself, no, it can't be that much. And then you look, look it up, and it actually is that astronomical amount. Um, and, yes, it, it didn't go... Um, in fact, two services for, for the mentally ill. It went to um, a bunch of boondoggles for the mayor's wife. So, so true, spending money, not a problem for, for this mayor. But give me a break on the maintenance. Yeah. They're not maintenance for used. respirators. No, this is like having, I don't know, hospitals, beds, masks. They're, they're covered in plastic. They're in the stockpile. I don't think Michael Bloomberg would have bought would have bought um, you know complex machinery that oh well it's a year later they're worth nothing now. Uh, according to the New York Post, it was anywhere between nine hundred million and one point eight billion dollars spent. Okay, on thank that you. You see, I right. underestimated it because right. I say eighty million, and I think no, it no, can't be couldn't that possibly much. be no one point eight billion. One point eight billion. Yeah. Uh, and I also, uh, if I can just take you out of, of this story just for a moment, because I thought of you uh, when I saw of the passing of Linda Tripp. I know that you were so engaged in that story. In, in your Wait, first... did Linda Tripp really die? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Did you not wow, know I must have been tied up with this coronavirus. How did yes. she die? She, she passed away uh, on, thir on, on Wednesday, excuse me, April 8th. It's really sad. She was taken into the hospital. She was not feeling well about a week ago, and she was immediately diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and within a week she was gone. Oh, my gosh. 
I'm so oh, sorry to be the one to break Linda. it to you. Yeah. yeah, well, I got her, her attorney, the libertarian deadhead Jim Moody. <laughs> I know. I know that you, you knew her, and, and, and you, I, I just, I, I'm sorry. I don't want to get your initial immediate reaction over it. I well, thought I'll you would tell you an interesting off. fact about Linda Tripp. Um, after one year, well, several years of the President of the United States committing um, egregious felonies, um, so detrimental to the rule of law that it, a- after it all came out, the entire Supreme Court boycotted his next State of the Union address, mm-hmm. molesting interns, having affairs right and left, committing perjury, suborning perjury, um, both from his, well, not both, from his secretary, from Vernon Jordan, of course, from Monica Lewinsky, all of it on tape, proved by DNA on Monica's blue dress. There was one criminal prosecution to come out of that case. Can you guess who it was of? Uh, Linda it wasn't Tripp. Linda Tripp, was it? Linda Tripp. That's obscene. And it was an outrageous, outrageous prosecution. Um, the argument of the Democratic prosecutors in Maryland was that they are in a one-party consent state. Remember, oh. she taped Monica Lewinsky. Right. Now, <laughs> the problem was the only reason the prosecutors or anyone else in the world knew about that was because she went to Ken Starr, right. and he gave her immunity for those tapes. They had a signed agreement. Ken Starr, as special prosecutor, represented the Department of Justice. They send it to the court for certification. She has immunity. Obviously, this was a fast-moving case. Even Janet Reno said, we got to move fast on this. Yeah. Um, um, the, the, the prosecutor's argument, approved by some idiot Democratic judge, I'm, I, I, I'm sure this was, was overturned as soon as it, it, it got to any federal court, was because a court had not yet signed off on it, it didn't count, which is totally contrary to federal law. That was the one prosecution to come out of the president, the president of the United States, committing felony after felony after felony. So, um, Which but, is, but, by the way... I mean, the, what you just described to me is the epitome of of persecuting a whistleblower. We hear all yeah. of this sanctimony about this whistleblower from the CIA who had no business writing this report on the President of the United States during the Trump administration. She was the quintessential whistleblower, and look what they did to her. Yes, and God bless Linda Tripp, none of this. None of this would have come out. Paula Jones, Jennifer Flowers, the, the rest of what the Clinton campaign winningly referred to as the bimbos. Oh, you know, the women Clinton chose to, to, to hit yeah. on or have sex the with. The Me Too victims. Right, Me Too victims. None of it would have come out. Those women would have been smeared but for Linda Tripp. Well, this is why I knew that you would have uh, some some passion about this. I had no idea that I was going to be the one to break the news to you, but uh, but now you know. Yes, uh, rest Poor in peace. Linda. Linda Tripp. Rest in peace, Anne. We got to leave it there. A good Friday to you and a happy Easter weekend. Good Friday. Good to talk to you. Thank you. It's four fifteen now. WMAL traffic and weather every ten minutes first on the fives. I feel terrible. You don't want to be the one to bring that news. Ed Rodriguez is in the Hadid Carpet Cleaning Traffic Center.